and by a canopy moon or so, no bossy, or the chin cata. Couldn't see when I saw any black people, if I name Mena Eastern News twenty four. As in the bonobo sink at a drain, I am a as in a naya de catch in a child that go ago, as quantum window as minat and a mazona. A decosy denying we are unna phone enough for me back ago. On a moya and a kumakia, I will leave forward a guy do a camper. Maka I couldn't connect me to an update. Maybe I'll come over Stamaka, Mansin and the can and Bastamaka, Muru Wendy Bonazo, and Bastamaki Fenimen of Buddha, or be five codun and now connect me to you. A guess every five Jamakia Webia, a woodchi, Ketata, Cabalo, a drop or your own comment, your own contribution. Bastamaki feature, Mienda and Nine, a guess in Nibako, Bastamaka. And Bastama Kifenimen of Buddha, and also Bastama called the Naman Debo. What I can have no no, Debo Yaman again. I'm going to be funny, get say on a drop or I found channel. All right, over to you. Hell in West Africa. Thus, the need for a new military base is said to be in the pipeline, preferably in Nigeria. In March, Niger ordered all U.S. troops to leave the country. Military spokesperson Colonel Amadou Abdramain accused the U.S. of raising objections about the allies that Niger had chosen. Also, the withdrawal of French forces was swiftly demanded by Niger's military government after they took power on July 26, with French President Emmanuel Macron then confirming their departure at the end of September. However, as events unfold, Russian troops have been deployed to an air base in Niger where American soldiers are located. The move comes after Niger's military rulers ordered the U.S. to withdraw troops who had been countering Islamic insurgents in the region. As both foreign countries withdraw their troops, the need to relocate them in or onto a new base seems to be a good option. And uh, with this good option, Nigeria is the center of consideration, thereby generating protests by some northern leaders. Joining us now on the show is Professor Bolaji Akinyemi, Nigeria's former Minister of Foreign Affairs. Good morning, Professor Akinyemi. Always good to see you on the morning show. Welcome. Good morning, Prof. Good morning, Nayo. Thank you for having me on your program. And good morning, Dr. Abati. And good morning, Rufai. Well, Prof, before you joined us, we had uh, Professor Jibrin Ibrahim addressing the same subject about uh, uh, the U.S. trying to set up a uh, displaced uh, military base from Niger at the border with, uh, between Niger and Nigeria. And the question about a letter that was written by Jibo and others is uh, about sovereignty. The Middle Bell Forum has also objected. Uh, the CUPP, I think I saw that during newspaper review, has also objected. Now, what's your view on this? I'm shocked about this development, and I hope it is not true. We have a long history about attempts at installing a military base in Nigeria. You recall, no, you won't recall, you are too young. Um, at the time of our independence, there was this attempt by the British to install a military base in Nigeria. Uh, it was raised in Parliament, Students from University of uh, Ibadan came on a march and there was a brouhaha and finally they killed that project. Therefore, this will not be the first time that there will be an attempt to have a military base in Nigeria if it is true that there is such an attempt. The last thing Nigeria wants is to have a military base 
by a superpower in counterpoise to another superpower because in a way Russia moving into Niger, into Mali, into Burkina Faso, the United States moving into Nigeria brings us actually right into confrontation with each other. And that's the last thing we want. I know that we have problems with the jihadists, with ISIS. Uh, we, we, we have security problems, yes. But the solution is not for us to be in confrontation with another superpower. We will simply, we will simply, you know, our, our, we will maximize our problems. Therefore, I hope it is not true. I hope it is not true. All right. Um, you, you say, thank you so much, Prof, that we will maximize our problems. And um, I think this also shares the, some sentiments raised by the leaders who had re written in opposition of Nigeria hosting these military bases. Um, aside from the perhaps um, you know, the conflict with Russia, host, hosting military bases in all these other countries. What are some of the other challenges? Because some people might say that it would be to the benefit of the country in terms of what we would get in added support against fighting terrorism, shoring up our military bases, support in that era if we were to host um, France and the United States of America. Would that not be a good enough argument for, um, even if it might not go well with the Russians in the other countries? No, because if the presence of France and the United States have been beneficial to in the Sahel, those countries will not be asking them to leave. Obviously, they have not found it beneficial. That's number one. Number two, all you've done is to bring the jihadists and the ISIS and the East-West to bring them further down towards Nigeria. Really, right now, um, Mali, uh, Mali uh, and, and the other countries, you know, have been, if you like, uh, they, they, they've been a buffer between us and ISIS. Now that you will be removing the United States and what have you, you've brought them right to the border with Nigeria. But so, there, there is a, a point that bothers me. And that is, I wish those Nigerians who have raised this issue have done it on a national platform. Recall I said at the beginning of my presentation that when the British tried it, the whole was mobilized. Why would the whole country not be mobilized at this time um, to show that there is a national opposition rather than a sectional opposition to the fact. It bothers me. You know, the, the whole issue about sectionalization that came up when um, Niger uh the issue of Niger when the coup took place, when it came up, some of us raised an alarm about the sectionalization and I think it is showing its head, it's rearing its head again. If there is a problem, it's going to be a national problem. It's not going to be a sectional problem. And 
I know some of the people who have signed these letters. They are my friends. We've been friends for a long time. And what is starting to manifest in their behavior is alarming. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, let's explore that conversation first. Don't they have a right to sign a letter? Because in their own estimation, they are going to be the first hit if anything happens. I mean, you remember how also they raised the brouhaha about the Niger border then when the president was about to go to war, you know, with Niger before that was stopped and that was not passed by the Senate. So don't they have a right to raise a lot? But secondly, I'd like to ask, so if you are saying the West shouldn't come in or she shouldn't have a best Nigeria, so are we going to leave this region to the Russians that are already having partnership with all this I don't want to use the word renegade, but let me use the word renegade. Renegade governments like Niger, the Malis of this world and all of that. Are you going to not leave the Russians to have a full swing there to probably set off their own architecture around there because they are chubby with this government? Because in all fairness, some will argue with you that we had Operation Bakan that spanned from 2014, I think it was the time of Francois Hollande then, to recently when he was just stopped which was costing the French about $1 billion a year, that kept some stability in the region as regards fighting the insurgents and all of that. Not total stability, but some level of stability. So are we now going to now leave? Because you know, Prof, that nature abhors a vacuum. If you say the French and the Americans should not have bases there, the Russians will have third party there. Already, uh, Alexander Prigozhin's outfit is already looming large across the African continent. We see their effects in what is happening in the fight with Hameti and his friend in Sudan and Al Bernam. So, look at these implications. Let's look at it properly, sir. Well, I, I, I see your point. If there is a problem in the North, it is a problem. It is the Nigerian army, not the northern army, that is going to uh, be engaged in the problem. Do not let us sectionalize Nigeria when a problem arises. After all, when we went to Ekomog, did we just send troops from... Ogun State, did we just send troops from uh, Oyo State? No, we sent Nigerian troops. That's the point I am making. I don't want it to spread. It is spreading. This sectionalization is spreading. And really, I think that the, 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 the I think the president actually ought to call a meeting of the Nigerian foreign policy elite. Let him nationalize it. Let, them, let him call them to a meeting in the villa. Uh, first of all, that will send a signal to Nigerians that, you know, he is talking to the elite. And number two, let him then tap into the brains that are available in this country. Number two, you, you raised this question about, well, with uh, Wagner already, you know, in the Sahel, what are we going to, I mean, what should Nigeria do in a way that you are asking that question? And my answer would be, for God's sake, Nigeria is a big country. If we cannot no, if we cannot set up our own assets in order to face down Wagner, then there is a problem somewhere. 
the amount of money that we have spent, this is since the time of, um, even since the time of General Lobasanjo, remember his uh, face off with the military of defense, uh, 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 with Malu, letting him know that, you know, the Nigerian armed forces, you know, does not need the, 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 the Americans to come here. This is not a new problem, you know. This has been going on since 1999. I, I, I mean, are we saying that you know, the Nigerian troops cannot, if properly organized, you see, we, don't let us export uh, our problems. I know we have problems within the Nigerian armed forces. Let us sort that out. But let's not sort it out by bringing the Americans. You bring in the Americans, you bring them in with their own problems. We shouldn't do that. Okay, Prof. I, <clears throat> I get your point about national security and all of that. But there used to be in place a presidential foreign policy advisory council. Does that body still exist? Is uh, the uh, Tinubu administration in any way interfacing with that body? <clears throat> Secondly, where is the role of the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs in all of this? Because the NIA is supposed to also be an advisory think tank uh, to the uh, uh, government. And then finally, what other option do you think is available uh, to the United States? Because if they don't uh, stay on the border of Nigeria, they probably will go to another country. Because at the end of the day, America will pursue its own strategic interest. Um, you know, when you are dealing with foreign policy matters, I should very well know, because I will, you, you were in the corridor uh, um, when Jonathan was there. There are certain things that you don't say uh, publicly. So um, what uh, NI is doing, um, the uh, foreign policy, of what they may be doing or may not be doing, uh, I wouldn't really want to say uh, publicly. Um, but I also believe that there is a need for the president to send a signal to Nigeria that he is consulting with the Nigerian foreign policy elite. It's not just these two bodies that you have mentioned. Um, you, 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 well, no, you won't recall. Look, we used to have public... Uh, we, we, we used to have public issues that we manifest publicly to let Nigerians know that we are on top of this situation. You, you, you are just doing it now. But I recall that NIA used to do this uh, when I was there. Uh, and it used to do this when um, I can tell you one and other, you know, uh, DJs were there. There is a function that publicity serves. Not, in, I mean, not to tell Nigerians everything that you are doing. But there is a, 
in a function that it serves. It also, when I remember, I recall when General Obasanjo during his first term um, was there. Uh, every Saturday, he used to have a meeting with the elite in this country where issues a need again to do that um as i think uh, i think it was rufa who said you no know, uh, uh, something about uh, not having um a vacuum and this is what you are doing you know you are moving into the vacuum to ensure that Nigerians are aware that, you know, we have a problem. And we do have a problem when, you know, you have, you know, Americans and the... And this is what I'm saying. Americans and the Russians are having a face-off. They're having a face-off in, um, in Ukraine. And, you know, it's like, you know, they, you want them to have a face off. I'm not saying that you know Arise wants them to have a face off. Of again, uh, in the Sahel, no, it's not the kind of thing that we want. Fine. Okay, Prof. Thank you. Now, on the flip side, Nigeria has enjoyed. You know, quite a good relationship diplomatically with the United States of America, sharing ideas. We receive support, even military and training from the from the United States. In the event that we reject the perhaps um, the 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 desire or want to establish their military base or a military base in Nigeria, how do you think that would impact on diplomatic relationships between Nigeria and the United States of America? Or will there be any impact at all? Um, this is not the this is not the first time that Nigeria and the United States will have a conversation on this issue of having a military base. Uh, but there was a time when the United States raised this issue of having a, uh, uh, a West African base for the United States. And several West African countries were um, consulted. Uh, and at the end of the day, Nigeria turned down the proposal. Nigeria was not the only country. Liberia was also consulted and pressure was brought by other West African countries. You know, it, it's not really the interest of Nigeria is not the only country that is going to be affected if we decide to have an American base in Nigeria. The 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 the, the, uh, the the Nigeria and the United States have a broad base, uh, what I say, a, a broad based interest that you know overrides just having a military base. Uh, I mean, after all, when we turned down the British base. In 1960, our relationship did not come crash and down. No, it continued. We will simply reformat our relationship. I understand the fact that the United States, the presence of Wagner, in the Sahel. But I just believe that we need, in, in the interest of Nigeria, 
we need to format our own relationship, uh, uh, reformat how we will deal with that problem. I'm not sure that bringing in American bases who have their own interest, their own interest is not just uh, the, the jihadists. That's not the only interest America has. America has other problems, okay. which may not be contaminous with the Nigerian interest. Okay. I think that is the point. Okay, okay Prof. I mean, you said a couple of things, but I was taken aback when you were talking about the days of Victor Malo, and I'm like, Prof, let's be realistic. The days of Victor Malo were the days where the army was a lot stronger, not stretched the way it is due to Boko Haram. We had just come out of the hills of Ekobog, where we did considerably well. We pumped a lot of money. Nigeria had the cash to be able to pump into Amari dead. It was still a lot better, but in the last over 10 years, this same army has been stretched. What I will have said will be a plausible solution to this debacle, because like I said before, nature abhors a vacuum. And the French that we're talking about already have a base in Côte d'Ivoire, in Port Boué, in Côte d'Ivoire. They have a base in Gabon. They have a base in Senegal. So they have already outflanked us on this coast. But on that territory where the Itatu had Operation Bakan, which they have left now, and the Americans who want to come in, is what they want to secure. Probably what we should have done is if we can put a money into, monies into a force like an Ecomog stabilization force where we can put across our own flanks and put as a base there. But Prof, you and I know Nigeria does not have the money for that kind of capacity. I mean, the good old days of the abachas of this one where we could pump money to Ecomog is long gone. So what will now be the solution? I think it's something people in your industry, in foreign affairs, should be able to think through and crack. And we've not even heard debates. I would like to hear debates from the likes of Mr. Tuga, the foreign affairs minister, and the NIA as regards this, because we need to solve this problem. Nature abhors a vacuum. Wagner will not make an official announcement that they are setting up a base there. It will just happen. And they will have intelligence there, and they will operate along that area. So it's a problem we need to solve. But does Nigeria have the capacity for like that stabilization force of that ECOMOC capacity to be able to stabilize and protect the Sahel? Do we have it? That would have been a solution, but I don't think we have that capacity. Even G5, we are not part of G5 Sahel. Well, the fact is, let us stop stealing money. Let us stop stop stealing Nigerian money. Let us stop stealing Nigerian oil. Let us let, let the National Assembly stop voting for themselves humongous money. The, if anybody wants to tell me, and and I'm saying this with all respect to you, you refer that a country of the size of Nigeria with oil, with uh, all, all, all the other uh, things that you know we have, that we cannot use those in order to provide assets to put Nigeria in order, then um, that's where I was going to say then it means there's something wrong with Nigeria. There is something wrong with Nigeria. Number, um, you know, you've mentioned, uh, or uh, well, you've mentioned, you know, uh, so, so some uh, organizations so know that deal with it. Um, uh, it next, next, there is a new organization, the Academy of International Affairs, and next week we are going to have an open door on this issue that, you know, we are going to debate it 
uh, not publicly debate it among ourselves and take a decision whether we are going to write a letter to the president or we are going to openly put our views in the newspapers to let Nigerians know uh, that it is not only you know, the northern political this, but that you know uh, there is a national elite that is also worried about it. And at the end of the day we should be able to come up with you know views on that, that note Prof. on that note on that note Prof we would like to thank you very much for joining us on the morning show today And the by that only no consciousness or any name, never go. Adeke is so a gay beef in the rear the ballon, the gentle lion who was in the rock war, no basin ketaka, or the key be a bone. Gave you a equal stomach air beef and done, you know, who was in the rock war. The folk who lived in Oakley, the cause the cave you the key was stomach air beef. A drop wire on the comment section below. Chitapa de ya instant news 24 kaisi wene wotelo nupozi ya dokemba. Dano nungu 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 nung